Hello friends, it's Luke the Gamer Duke. I enjoy playing, dissecting, and talking about video games. Today in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I want to talk about melee weapon affixes. Not just talk about them, I want to rank them. Not some, not the best, but all weapon affixes. What are those rankings? Let's go find out. First off, in talking melee weapon affixes, I'm talking ones that directly affect you in combat. So additions such as magic find, run walk speed, or heal stamina are out. I'm also excluding incredibly specific affixes found only on one rune word or unique, such as chance to reanimate. Also before we begin, please note that these rankings are absolutely set in stone. There is no other consideration nor debate for anywhere else they could possibly go. Since everything is technically helpful, the ranking chart will be as such. E tier for minimal assistance or barely noticeable. D tier for circumstantially helpful. C tier for perks which are decently helpful overall. B tier for solid additions. A tier are great and definitely worthwhile. And S tier are awesome, baby. Some affixes can be found on all items, while others are only on uniques, rune words, or sets, which will be highlighted in gold instead of white. Here we have our bucket of affixes, and I guess the best way to go is in alphabetical order. Hold on to your butts. Because there's a lot to go through. And kicking off the entire endeavor, plus all resistances. We all know all res is an absolute necessity. Spells can cause massive damage, so right away we're going S tier for sure. Plus dexterity. Attack rating is not a major priority, but adding it can be helpful, so C tier it is. Plus life. You need life to live. If you run out, you die. So adding more, especially in large chunks, is certainly A tier. Plus mana. Adding mana can be deceptively helpful, being all your skills require mana to use, so adding more is generally helpful. B tier. Plus min-max damage. More damage is a good thing, and since it's added to your base damage, it's always a great addition. A tier. Plus strength. Strength increases direct damage, granted not by large margins, and allows the use of better equipment. It can be a solid addition. B tier. Plus to all skills. Plus to all skills is where it's at. Adding a skill level or two to every single skill you have is almost always a go-to option. Absolutely S tier. Plus to all character skills. This is essentially the exact same thing, only character specific. Adding all skills is one of the best perks of the game. S tier. Plus to character specific skills. Specific character skills are a little different as it's highly dependent on your current build. But getting a good combo can definitely be a solid addition, so B tier. Plus to all attributes. Adding more of all of your attributes is great as it increases everything. Life, mana, strength, and dexterity are all directly related to you. A tier. Adds aura when equipped. Adding an aura may be the entire reason you even build said rune word to begin with. Granted there aren't many, but as all of them are way up there in levels and majorly beneficial, it makes it to A tier. Adds base damage. Base damage is very much the base of the weapon, making it go higher, then increases the enhanced damage even further. It's super understated. S tier. Adds skill via charges. Most all of the lucrative skills are extremely expensive to recharge, and the others are basically useless. And since you have to remember to switch weapons prior to exiting to keep it attached to your skill bar, D tier for you. Add sockets. Finding weapons of sockets is always a bonus. It allows the addition of whatever it fixes you want via gems, jewels, or runes, potentially boosting the weapon's usefulness greatly. S tier. Attack rating, percent bonus to attack rating. Same as dexterity, it's not a necessity, but can definitely be helpful if it's around, so C tier. Attack rating versus demons and undead. Same as just before, but actually a bit worse since it's only helpful in certain areas. D tier. Attack speed. This is a sleeper right here. Adding 20 or 30% attack speed to a higher damage weapon, or making a faster weapon even faster, can have dramatic results on your overall DPS. 
This is definitely A tier. Attacker takes damage. In most every case outside of normal act one, and maybe like one unique, the amount of damage the enemy will take is fairly nil compared to not just their health, but also to the damage you're outputting. E tier. Blinds target. Blinding the enemy essentially flat out stops them from attacking. Stops them from attacking. And for more than a few seconds too. Absolutely S tier. Chance to cast spell on striking. These can be a bit hit or miss, but the few instances that they do hit can be a solid addition to your arsenal. B tier. Chance to cast spell while being struck or upon death. These are not that great, both in what they cast and how they are used. They rely on you getting hit or even dying to trigger, which I would imagine one would try not to do. Unreliable at best, E tier. Cold damage. Cold damage is something every melee character searches for. Why? It slows enemies and has the chance to shatter them, halting some from being revived. A tier. Critical strike, deadly strike. Here's a doozy if I've ever seen one. Provides the chance to do double damage. That's right, double damage. Critical strike needs probably three or four to be on par with most deadly strikes, but both can absolutely wreck. S tier, baby. Crushing blow. Crushing blow is pretty great, especially versus higher health enemies. It has a chance to nuke one quarter of the enemy's remaining health and one eighth for bosses. And when it connects, you will visibly see the chunks of health fly off. Another S tier. Damage, magic damage reduced by. Let's be honest, damage reduction here usually sucks. Some of the golded items can reduce by a percentage instead of a flat number, but basically all of them are armor, not weapons. Reduction by number, E tier. Damage taken goes to mana. This one can be pretty interesting as it requires you getting hit, but the percentages are actually pretty solid for this one. So it goes to B tier, barely. Damage versus demons and undead. The percentages on these are absolutely hit or miss, and it's also limited to certain areas. I'll bet those areas are a bit over half of the game, but due to its wide percentage range, D tier. Hey, guess what? We're halfway there. You're doing great. Defense versus missile. The number ranges for this are quite wide, from like 30 to several hundred. Granted, missiles are not found everywhere, but versing mass missile as a melee can actually be quite dangerous. So it'll stay out of E and will go to circumstantially helpful. D tier. Percent enhanced damage. The entire point of a melee swinger doing damage is to do more damage. So there's nothing more to be said. S tier. Elemental magic absorb. Absorbing and healing for a set amount is absolutely dependent on flat number or percentages. Being you actually heal, flat numbers will make it to D tier, but percentages will get tossed all the way up to A tier. Elemental resistance. Singular elemental resistances are always good to have, but being you only get one for this, it goes to B tier. Ethereal. Y'all might fight me on this one. I am not a fan of ethereal items. Unless it's for my merc, or happens to have indestructible attached to it, I despise having to constantly repair in the cube, especially if it has low durability. D tier. Freeze target. Freeze target is what cold does on crack. It instantly freezes enemies cold in their tracks, and will shatter them when they die. S tier for the freeze shatter combo. Fire damage. Elemental damage is always a plus, but unfortunately fire damage generally isn't very high, so it goes to C tier. Half freeze duration. Remaining uncoldified is great. However, the number of valid cold attacks are limited and aren't exactly found everywhere. But being cold as a melee can be detrimental. I'll squeak it up to C tier. Hit recovery. 
a recovery is quite helpful. You will be getting interrupted, and the ability to recover faster in order to either hit back or to run away can save your life. Solid B tier. Ignores target defense. Enemy defense keeps you from landing attacks, so dropping the enemy defense to the point where you land 100% of your attacks will actually squeak into A tier. Indestructible. By itself on most any item, I don't see a single need for this. You have to repair all of your other items anyway. Are you so broke you can't afford to repair your weapon? E tier. Indestructible plus ethereal. But I will absolutely make a consideration for those indestructible ethereal items. Yes, indeed. Those will definitely be up there in S tier. Knockback. It can definitely be helpful, particularly in tougher mobs, but it can also be just as annoying in regards to actually killing enemies as you keep, you know, knocking them back. C tier. Life Leech. You leech life with every hit. When you hit bad people, your life goes up. S tier. Lightning damage. Lightning damage can produce some ridiculously high numbers, well, well into the hundreds. However, its minimum damage is always one. B tier for this one. Magic damage. Again, adding additional damage is always a good thing, and magic damage numbers usually produce some pretty solid ranges, so B tier. Mana after each kill. The numbers on mana after each kill by far and large flat out suck. Outside of maybe two or three specific weapons, skip. E tier. Mana leech. Regaining mana every hit can be sneaky awesome especially if you're incorporating heavy mana skills into your playstyle. A tier for some solid mana leech. Mana regen. Regenerating mana is always helpful, but the percentages aren't really that great without stacking, so it goes to C tier. Minus target defense. Some of the percentages here can get up to 50%, which is pretty solid, but most are 25 and 33%, so C tier. Monster Flea. Similar to Knockback, Monster Flea can be helpful in tough mobs, but it doesn't last too long and can be more annoying than helpful when you have to chase down all the enemies running away from you. C tier. Open Wounds. Open Wounds is no joke. Causing higher health enemies to constantly bleed said health can be quite noticeable in extended combat. Definitely A tier. Poison Damage. I'm adding a caveat here, but overall, randomly adding poison damage is close to useless. Unless you're specifically stacking it, it's likely not worth much consideration. E tier for stacking basically being required. Prevent Monster Heal. This one is interesting. It's definitely not helpful everywhere, as not all monsters heal, but where it is helpful will likely be quite noticeable, so we'll take it up to B tier. Replenish Life. It makes your life go back up. It replenishes. All by itself. It, it constantly goes back up. S tier. Slain monsters rest in peace. This is quite literally only on three items. I don't know why I felt a need to include it. Maybe I think it just sounds cool as shit. Slain monsters rest in peace. It's great in those certain areas, but not really outside of that. C tier. And last, but not least, slows target. Making the enemy you're hitting hit you slower, including bosses, is going to be quite helpful in combat. So we'll end the entire shebang in A tier. So there they are, all of the melee weapon affixes. Ranked. Did it pan out how you thought? Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments, and feel free to rework your version of the entire list in the comments as well. Not like it matters anyway, because it's all set in stone. If you enjoyed this ranking, consider hitting that like button, 
and remember to subscribe as I'm working toward more Diablo and other ARPG gameplay analytics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.